Hello! Today I'm going to share a few tricks that I often do uh, when enhancing sound effects for either video games or film and television um, and, and stuff like that. So I've got these, these sounds here, these five or six sounds, I'll just play through them. So fairly common sounds that you would find in sample packs, um, highly useful for film and television foley, um, maybe UI sound effects in a video game, or just to be used as sort of abstract layers in a sound design process. Now they all sound pretty good, um, but you know, with, uh, um, with sound design, they, there's always room for a little bit more, I find. So I'm just going to share a few common things that I, I do to enhance sounds like these. The first trick that I typically do is using a pitch delay. So what that means is a delay, and typically I set it very fast. I'll show you the settings in a once I bring it up here. Um, typically very fast, and each repetition of the delay pitches down. Um, so this is the Valhalla delay and it has this pitch mode and you can see over here um, the pitch that you can choose. You can either pitch it up or pitch it down um, and what I generally find is if you keep the semitones to a whole number and also if you if you choose either five or seven or 12, they work really well because those are harmonically related to whatever frequencies are coming into the into the module. So if you do minus seven, for instance, each repetition will be a perfect fifth down, a perfect perfect fifth in, in musical theory terms, um, and minus five will be a perfect fourth down. So typically I, I do minus five and what I found works just through trial and error is 65 milliseconds. So this is a very fast repetition and thus it's a very fast descent into the abyss, so to speak. Um, yeah, let's maybe put it on these whooshes because, you know, the frequency response is quite high with those. So you should be able to hear a bit of depth if we if we do that one uh, so route it to the pitch del I'll just play it without that um, without the effect so you can remember what it sounds like and then with hey woohoo pretty cool pretty cool so um, it sounds a bit cartoonish at the moment so what I typically do is I will then route the output of the pitch delay into a reverb. So you can see I've got two reverbs here. V is what I'll typically call just a, you know, short to medium, transparent-ish sounding reverb. And then I typically have a, a really long plate reverb as well. But let's route it into the sort of more subtle reverb to begin with. So we'll change the, the output of that guy to V, and now we need a V, um, so maybe fab filters always a always a fine choice. I find. Let's let's hear what that sounds. Hopefully, it makes sense. What's what's happening? This audio, a dry version of this audio is coming straight out the speakers in a dry format. It's also being sent at Unity Gain to this channel. It's going through the pitch, uh, pitch descent, pitch delay, and that's going straight into a reverb. So each one of these repetitions is going to be reverberated, and then it's going out the speakers. So let's listen to that. Cool. Sounds very cool. Now, 
one thing you can do is you can maybe just roll off the low frequencies a touch just because it is being pitched down it is getting pretty low end heavy when it does that pretty cool let's hear what it sounds like on some of these other sounds like this one for instance cool so let's route that to the pitch delay. So yeah, big cavernous crash on the end there. Um, pretty cool. Let's have a look at this kick. So dry kick. You know, this is an interesting one because we could use that for like a, a deep thud layer. It could be anything. It could be a layer and it explosion or an impact or something like that um, so what I might do is I might just EQ out that that high end because it's got quite a bit of high end in it um, yeah. just to make it a little bit more thuddy that's cool and then we'll do our same treatment here there we go so you can hear it sort of drop in pitch as it goes down. Let's take the reverb off, let's see what, uh, sorry, let's take the EQ off, see what happens there. Yeah, cool. Um, and let's have a listen to this debris crash. Yeah, so quite, quite reverberant. Maybe let's take the reverb way down and see what happens to it all. Cool. Let's maybe bring the feedback down so there's not quite as many repetitions. Yeah. Without the effects. If it's not obvious what I'm doing there, when I do that and it goes blue, that means it's uh, it's bypassing the send. So when I do that, it's no effects. When it's like this, the effect is on. Cool. And the last thing I might do is a layer. I mean, it's pretty full on at the moment. Um, so this might be going a little bit over the top, but sometimes I'll sneak a little bit of this in. I will sometimes put in like a quite a dirty, extremely long plate. Um, so I guess it's worth mentioning, um, you know, the specific brands of plugins I'm using. I don't think it's essential to the technique. These are just the ones that I have and use. Um, you should be able to achieve these sorts of things with with uh, with whichever plugins you you have. The only tricky one might be the um, the pitch delay. Um, you know, this is a feature that the Valhalla delay offers. Uh, but if you're crafty enough, you will be able to recreate this sort of functionality uh, manually through whatever tools that you have. <clears throat> because all DAWs have delay functionality and they all have pitch shifting functionality. So if you're clever enough, you'll be able to achieve the same results, even though it might be a few extra steps if you don't have a plugin that natively offers that as a uh, as an option. Um, cool. So let's just bring in a little bit more um, of the plate reverb. Uh, and maybe we'll achieve that by sending to it from the delay channel. That might be the the way to go. And we probably don't want too much of this one because it's going to be pretty pretty hairy already. So we'll only send a, a smaller amount. And let's have a listen. 
<laughs> yeah, those are those are pretty wild. I like I like this sound and I like this sound. Um, yeah, that's cool. This one kind of goes forever, doesn't it? It's a bit much. I feel like it's an interesting technique and it definitely adds something something quite special to these sorts of sound effects. So I hope you got something out of it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.